Hello everyone, this is Jason Merkel with Horizon Hobby, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about the E-Flight Viper 70mm EDF. Uh, this has been uh, very popular so far, and a lot of guys have asked questions about radio setup and batteries in particular for it. So it's one of our very first ever high-performance EDFs that runs on a 6S power system uh, that also is equipped with uh, Safe Select in the Binafly Basic version. And so we've had some questions about how many channels does it take to get uh, the Safe Select functionality. Uh, what radios work best for that. If I have a six channel radio, how would I program that to make it work? We're going to get into those details a little later in the video. First though, I want to talk about batteries. So we've had a lot of questions. Can I use a two, three cell batteries in series? How big of a six cell battery can I use? How small of a six cell battery I can, use, can I use? And we've addressed a lot of those in various places, including in our recommended uh, battery setups. But that said, we wanted to cover a few of the other options that maybe we didn't go into a lot of detail on. So so the first of which is what I've got installed on the airplane here is uh, an E-Flight 6L 3200 milliamp battery, which we don't officially recommend, and the reason for that is because it includes an EC3 connector. Uh, the airplane is equipped with an EC5 connector out of the box. You can see here's an EC3, and I have an adapter here that goes from EC3 to an EC5. The reason for that is, again, the ESC that's included in the airplane includes the EC5 connector because of the current that we're pulling. And uh, although an EC3 connector will work, EC5 is preferred, and so on high-performance ducted fans, high-current applications, we will install an EC5 whenever we can. So, you know, that said, the batteries we officially recommend and for example, this Connexus uh, 4000 milliamp 40C battery here, you can see this is already equipped with an EC5 connector out of the package. And uh, the reason we recommend this battery is for exactly that reason. Now that said, the 4000 milliamp battery is a little on the large side. It makes the airplane feel a little nose heavy to some pilots. Also, it does require removal of a little bit of foam on the canopy to make sure that it fits well in the airplane. And so, um, although it is one of our top recommended batteries and it's the recommended battery if you want the most flight time and the most power possible, it may not be the best solution for everyone. Some people may already have a 6L 3200, uh, the E-Flight version or another version, again, maybe with an EC3, and then they'll have to purchase the EC3 to EC5 adapter, which we'll talk about in a second. But what a lot of people asked about is, can I use two 3-cell 3200s in series, and you certainly can. So let's say you have these 3-cell 3200s from other applications, uh, you know, a lot of mid-sized park flyers, uh, maybe you have an apprentice, and you're moving up. Uh, and so these batteries are relatively common, and they're usually equipped with, again, EC3 connectors, as you can see here. And so what you would do is you could use these two 3-cell 3200s in place of this one 6-cell 3200. Uh, it's a little bit taller usually in form factor because there's some extra shrink tubing and tape and things. Uh, but what you can do to make that happen is you then would first buy this EC3 series Y harness and basically you would connect the batteries in series so these two 3-cells now effectively become a 6-cell battery. And so I've done that here, but again, we've run into the issue of we've got an EC3 here, but we need an EC5 connector uh, to plug into the ESC. So again, we would use the EC3 to EC5 adapter here. We plug that in, and so we now have a 6-cell 3200 milliamp battery set up with an EC5 connector. There's a lot of excess wiring here, and I want to point out that although that will work, it's really not ideal. It's not, it's not what you want if you can avoid it. But that said, I know a lot of guys don't want to have to buy extra batteries, especially batteries that they may not use in other airplanes later on. 6L3200 is not a terribly uncommon size, but it is uh, somewhat unlikely that a lot of guys have a lot of those on or in their battery arsenal. So you might have a lot of 3-cell batteries. Great. If you do, you can do this series harness route. You can even eliminate a connector here by just swapping the, uh, the main series connection over to an EC5 connector instead of the EC3. If you're up for doing some soldering, you can shorten the wires. You could even build your own harnesses, so on and so forth. Uh, but that said, again, this is a good alternative for people that may already have 3-cell 3200s and don't want to buy a 6-cell battery. And so really quick before I go much further, I'm going to mention the item numbers here. First for the EC3 to EC5 adapter, in case you uh, already have a battery that will work but you don't have the right connection. This is uh, usually, we title it as the EC5 battery to EC uh, three device adapter, and it's sold under both E-Flight and our Dynamite brands, and the E-Flight item number is EFLAEC510. 
Again, that's EFLAEC510. And the dynamite is DYNC0030. And so we'll include these item numbers and descriptions uh, in the description for the video here. And again, that is the, the EC3 to EC5 adapter that you need to plug into the speed control. And then if you have the Y harness option, if you need that for uh, connecting your batteries in series, that is actually the uh, EC3 battery series harness. And that's also available from both E-Flight and Dynamite. The E-Flight item number is EFLAC308. And the dynamite item number is DYNC0014. And again, we'll include those uh, item numbers and descriptions in the uh, description for this video. So you guys can, uh, it probably even will put the links to the product pages on there so you can just click and buy them. Some guys might already have those. In fact, I actually went into my battery box this morning and I, and I found these um, because in the past I've done other series connections. I've done, I've had to do some adapting from EC3 to EC5 for other products before. And so it, this is something I fortunately have, but if you don't have, it, it's very nice uh, because these are already pre-made. They're very inexpensive, or relatively speaking, compared to the amount of time it takes to solder and the wire and the connectors, uh, it's a good value to buy them put together. So now that we talked a bit about the battery options, what I want to do is go over some radio options. And so this has been probably the number one uh, discussion topic that we've seen in various places. What transmitter do I need to get all the functionality of the airplane out of the airplane? And so when it comes to a high performance ducted fan like this, which has a uh, all the full standard functions, of course, you've got throttle control, of course, you've got elevator and rudder, you've got ailerons, you've got flaps and retractable landing gear, that is six channels. So that's what we consider in today's world a full house airplane. Uh, and so a lot of warbirds will have all of those functions. Again, a lot of EDF jets now will have those functions. Now beyond those functions, we might have some new uh, down the road options, or in this case, in the Bind and Fly Basic version, we have Safe Select as an option. So in order to operate all of the functions separately, including safe select, you really would need a seven channel transmitter. That said, a lot of people already own a six channel transmitter, and you can definitely fly this airplane on a six channel transmitter. You don't need more than six channels to fly it. However, if you would like to operate safe select on its own channel, or its own function, its own switch, you would need a seven channel transmitter to do that. Now a lot of guys might have an old DX7, DX7S, a lot of guys still find those great radios, uh, so they're all set on that. A lot of guys have DX8s, uh, Gen 1, Gen 2s, uh, now we have the DX80, which we'll get into in a moment here, but a lot of guys have DX6s and DX6Es, and even a DX6I. I will say this though, this will be my little PSA, if you have a DX6I, that radio is pretty old these days. I mean granted we still produced it up until just a couple of years ago, it's one of the best selling radios ever. Uh, but that said, it does not use our same airware software as a lot of our other transmitters. It also only has 10 model memory. I say only 10. That's obviously a lot. But that transmitter at this point, it, it's kind of run its course. And I would strongly recommend upgrading to at a minimum a DX6E, uh, also then the DX80. And then we have some other great transmitters in the Spectrum Transmitter lineup, of course. But again, you can fly this airplane with a six channel transmitter. You do not need a seven channel transmitter. The reason we recommend a six to seven plus channel transmitter for the bind fly basic version is because if you want all the functions on separate switches and separate channels, you have to have a seventh channel available for turning safe select on and off. That said, what we have done is we've come up with a solution. If you have a six channel transmitter and you would like to have all the functions and safe select to be able to turn on and off, we have found a way that you can tie safe select into the flap channel. So when you have full flap deflection, you have safe on. You can then use the full flap deflection for takeoff and landing. So your safe is on during takeoff, your safe is on during landing. You could also use that as a, a, a bailout, so to speak. So let's say you, you lose orientation or something, just flip your flaps all the way down. We'll have a little bit of a delay on there, so that way, uh, you know, the plane doesn't immediately jump it back to a level orientation with the flaps deployed fully. Uh, and so we'll talk about that when we go into the radio setup. But again, you can definitely use a DX6E, a DX6, to have all six functions of the aircraft plus safe select. The only catch is safe select will then be tied to your flap channel. So uh, the manual covers a lot of these setups and uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to walk you through this. might seem a little tedious, might take a little bit of time, but I'm going to walk you through the setup of a brand new model on a DX6E. I'm going to set it up just for this Viper that you guys see sitting here on the table so that way we have all six functions, retractable landing gear, the flaps, we got all the aileron elevator, so on and so forth, and that we have safe select tied to the full flap setting. So I'm going to turn the transmitter on here first 
and I'm going to go through a couple of things before we bind the airplane. And now when you bind the aircraft, you have your choice. You can bind it uh, as AS3X only. Uh, you can bind it as AS3X and safe select, depending on the, the way that you bind the airplane. And so we'll go into that. But first, this is a brand new model, brand new aircraft model, an Acro model. It's an airplane. It's got a five-minute timer here. And so what I'm going to do is using the manual as my guide, I'm going to go into first system setup. So right here is system setup at near the bottom of the function list. Click on that there. I'm going to disable my RF. Yes. From here, I'm going to go to model type is already preset for airplane, uh, so you don't have to set that again. Um, I'm going to go into, of course, you can name this as your Viper if you want to, no problem. But I'm going to go into aircraft type, and I'm going to go into wing type, and I'm going to click this, and I'm going to scroll over to the setting for one aileron, one flap. Now, I know some guys are going to say, but wait, this has two ailerons, and it has two flaps, and it has two aileron servos, and two flap servos. That is true, but because they're Y-harnessed going into the receiver, they're treated as one aileron and one flap. So I'm going to select that value there. I'm going to go back to the list here, and then I'm going to go back to the main, which is the function list. I'm going to go back in here. Now we're back to the function list. Okay, so here in the function list, I'm now going to go to servo setup. I'm going to reversing. So here's travel. I've selected that. Now I'm going to scroll through there, sub trim. Now there's reverse. Now in the manual, depending on the version that you've gotten, if you've gotten an earlier shipment airplane, the manual is not going to explain to reverse the flap channel, but I'm going to have you do that. But first I'm going to reverse gear as the manual states. Then I'm also going to scroll over. I'm going to reverse flap, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is because I want my switch to function the mostly industry standard way, and I also want then to have uh, safe select activated when I'm in the full flap, lowest flap switch position. And I'm going to go back to the list here, and then I'm going to scroll down to, uh, oh, one thing that I'm going to do is, th this is somewhat personal preference, but just to be safe, I'm going to set my timer to four minutes. And the timer setting is going to di be dictated somewhat on your flying style, somewhat on the size and capacity of battery you use. I'm going to set it to four minutes because I'll be using the 4,000 milliamp battery. Also, I'm going to set this to use the momentary eye bind button for it. I don't necessarily personally like having it on the uh, throttle stick uh, because if I'm just testing things and I've got the throttle stick moving up and down and starts my timer, uh, I then have to now make sure that I hit I switch I to activate to start my timer before I take off and again that's very much personal preference and, and there's a lot of settings that are personal preferences some things are not like servo reversing is not usually personal preference your elevator will go the same direction for most people you would want your elevator to go up when you pull back on the stick so you know other things though sometimes re retractable landing gear sometimes flap operation and again especially timer and things like that those are somewhat personal preference so uh, I'm gonna go back to the transmitter here we're going to uh, now scroll uh, to the uh, flap system. So the flap system was activated when I chose the one aileron and one flap wing option. And so for the flap system, I'm going to activate it and I'm going to set it to uh, switch D. So it usually defaults to switch D. Switch D is this three position long, long switch here on the front panel. That is industry standard typically for a uh, flap system. So you can see by moving the switch I can assign that switch very easily. Now that menu is going to pull up and this is where I'm going to vary from the original version of the manual. The later versions of the manual and addendums that we'll post on our website may have these new settings for you guys and we'll also include these in the description for the video that you see here. But let's go back to the transmitter and I'm going to show you the settings that I'm going to use for the different switch positions uh, so that way we can have safe select active with our switch. So for position zero, I'm going to go to 100% flap. So I'm going to scroll to positive, not negative, but positive 100% flap here. Now this is setting uh, my up position, my, my flaps, no flaps position basically. And 100% basically gives us uh, zero level flaps. And then I'm not going to put any elevator mixing in. That's somewhat personal preference. On this particular model, we found for the most part, it's not necessary to have uh, elevator mixing. Uh, but again, it, it is sometimes personal preference. Uh, position 1, in the instruction manual uh, for the original version, it says 0%. However, in talking to the guys that have flown the Viper the most, they've recommended a 45% positive value here. So I'm going to go to that. So I'm going to set it to 45%. Now, on switch position 2, 
in the manual, the original version of the manual, it recommended negative 100. That's a bit more travel than this airplane needs for full flaps. It's also a lot more travel than most people are comfortable with. It also does potentially lead to the servos binding. So we strongly recommend adjusting that setting to, and I'm going to show you guys here, negative 65%. So 65, negative 65%. By the way, one thing that we've learned, and, and again, I'm setting this DX6E up to operate in with Safe Select Active. And so at negative 65%, I'm going to get my full flaps traveling, um, the, the maximum flap deflection that we're kind of recommending now based on a lot of flight experience. And then also that's still going to activate Safe Select. If I go below negative 55%, if I go to like ne negative 50, 45, so on and so forth, I'm not going to activate Safe. Safe is not seeing a high enough value in the flap travel to then activate Safe Select. It's not going to turn Safe on. So that's why we're choosing that 65% because it's a good full flap setting. You can use it for takeoff, you can use it for landing, uh, and then it will also activate Safe uh, correctly. Now, one thing that I'm also going to show is in that menu, you guys can see the speed setting. So if you go back to that, that screen, you can see speed. Right now, I'm going to leave it at normal. After I bind the airplane and after I actually set the uh, safe select uh, switch um, onto the flaps, then I'm going to come back into the speed and adjust it. If I adjust the speed now and then try to assign the switch, I won't be able to do that. And the reason for that is because there's a delayed reaction then in the flaps. And so when I try to tra travel the switch to the safe select on position and toggle it back and forth five times to activate safe select on that switch, it won't know because I've slowed it down. So I'm going to leave that at normal. And now we've done most of our basic settings for the transmitter. And I'm going to go back to the main function list and I'm going to turn the transmitter off because I'm going to bind it. So now I'm going to go through the bind process at the airplane to bind it with safe select on. And if you bind it normally, so for example, if you plug in a bind plug and then while the bind plug is in, you go ahead and turn your transmitter on and bind it to the tr receiver, it's just AS3X mode, which is what a lot of experienced pilots are going to want. They're not going to activate safe select. Totally understandable, no problem. That's why we call it safe select. We're not forcing it on anybody. That said, even as an experienced pilot, myself and guys like David Payne, Ali Mashinchi, these guys, some of the best jet pilots in the world, they bind their airplanes with safe select on. And the reason for that is because we don't use safe select uh, necessarily to help us land and take off. Although every once in a while, hey, if it's super windy and there's a lot of crosswind, it doesn't hurt to have it. Uh, but we like to have Safe Select activated for a number of other tangible reasons. One of which is, let's say we lose orientation, fly through the sun. Uh, we can just flip Safe on and it takes the airplane back to level. We can flip it off and fly away. Uh, let's say we have to get something out of our eyes. We've got sweat dripping into our eyes. We've got bugs flying around our face. We've got a dog nipping at our heels. We can turn on Safe Select to actually help you know, get the airplane level and give us a few seconds to get back uh, to fly the airplane safely. So that's a tangible reason for it. The other one is sometimes we have guys come up next to us and say, hey, I'd love to fly that. I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. No problem. Flip safe on and they can fly it. With safe activated, you have pitch and bank angle limits and those angle limits will keep you from rolling upside down or pitching upside down. And when you let go of the stick, it goes right back to level. And that's really helpful for landings and takeoffs in particular. It keeps the wings level for you and you can focus on just the elevator and your throttle uh, and then using the rudder to keep the nose lined up on the center of the runway. Uh, and so a lot of times there are, again, benefits even as an experienced pilot for activating safe select. But as an inexperienced pilot or as a low time pilot, a, uh, let's say first time EDF pilot, safe select is great to have. You can have that as a bailout option if you're in the air and you lose orientation, if you go into a spin or something like that, or on landing, especially in a high crosswind, you can turn safe select on and it reduces your workload immensely, makes the airplane even easier to land. And this airplane is already very easy to land, but with safe activated, it's even easier yet to land. So I'm going to bind it here with a safe select active. And what's really nice is this is not mentioned in the manual. But there's an extension that comes out of the bind plug, bind port on the receiver, so that way you don't have to get the bind plug way down inside and into the receiver. You can just plug it into this extension that comes out of the bind, uh, bind port on the receiver. It's very, very convenient. So you can see I've got the bind plug in now. My transmitter is turned off, but I am going to plug in my battery. And again, I'm just doing this for binding purposes, so I'm not strapping the battery in. So now what you guys can't see is that the light is flashing on the receiver and now before I turn my transmitter on and because I want to activate safe select I'm going to pull the bind plug out now the receiver knows that when I bind it to the transmitter that I have activated safe select 
So now I'm going to come over to my transmitter, and now, generally speaking, I usually have a little bit more separation between my airplane and transmitter to bind it safely, uh, to bind it correctly. Uh, we're going to see, hopefully it takes here. I'm just holding down the momentary button, which is one of the methods for binding. And you can see that I've successfully bound DSMX22MS with telemetry, and now the transmitter is bound to the airplane with safe select active. But before I do anything else, I want to point out that usually when you're setting up an airplane for the first time, you'll want to make sure that all your control surfaces are mechanically level. Now, out of the box from the factory, most airplanes are pretty close. But not every airplane is created equal. There's sometimes variances and, you know, the threading on a, on a push rod and, you know, and maybe there's some moisture changes in, in the foam and things like that over time. So what you'll want to do is, and I've already done that on this airplane prior to this video, is I went and made sure that all my control surfaces were level when I was in the standard or AS3X mode. I did not activate safe select because if you turn safe select on and your airplane is slightly off level, the nose is up, down, the aileron, the, the wings are, are, are banked or angled, then the control surfaces are going to try and go to the position to counteract that. And so that is not the official neutral position of those servos. So I'm doing that with AS3X. So again, before you go any further, before you assign safe, you should go ahead and check all of your control surfaces. So first off, you got to make sure they go the right direction, of course. Now, if you follow our settings, in the manual for a spectrum transmitter, they should, but I still check them. I got left rudder, right rudder, I've got up elevator, I've got down elevator, left aileron, right aileron, and uh, you can hear there, I've, I've actually um, armed the ESC. I'm going to go ahead and th lower the throttle trim just to be safe for now, uh, but again, I'm checking to make sure my control surfaces are all going the correct direction. My flaps are now on my flap switch here. Again, I have not slowed them down. They're operating at full speed because I need that in order to assign safe select to my flap switch. So again, everything's operating the correct directions, so that's great. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, assign safe to my flap switch. Now, in the original version of the manual, this was not covered. A lot of people know this from our other manuals, and then also in later versions of the manual in the addendum that you'll see, we're going to explain this process. But basically, you move the uh, throttle stick to the lowest position, you give it full right rudder, you give full up elevator, and full left aileron. So you can see in the, if you zoom into the transmitter here, you guys can see I've got the sticks basically in the bottom corners, inside corners. Now that I've done that, I'm telling the receiver, hey, these are the values that show you that I can now assign a switch. And you can assign any switch, but on a DX6E, again, we don't have a separate switch to assign for safe select. I'm going to assign it to the flap switch. So I'm going to lower my hands here so you guys can see. I'm going to wiggle this switch back and forth five times. You have to do that in order to tell safe that it needs to go to this channel, this switch. And you guys can hear there that, that little blurp of the, of the motor and all the control surfaces moved. That has now told me that I have assigned safe to that switch in that channel. And so now what you'll notice, if I take everything back to the neutral positions, that now when I deflect the flaps fully, I will actually have safe select. So right now I've got the flaps up all the way. You can see they're in their neutral position. They're in their up position. And uh, when I move the airplane, none of the control surfaces deflect to counteract my movements. You'll hear them move a little bit, partly because they're digital servos, partly because AS3X may or may not be active. Uh, if I go to the mid-flap position, you can see I've got the flaps deflected partly. And again, the aileron is not moving to counteract it. Uh, the elevator is not necessarily moving to counteract it. I'm going to go to full flap travel, and now... When I deflect the, the wing to, say, the left, right aileron is coming up to counteract that because safe is now active. If I lower the nose, you can see the elevator is deflecting upward because safe is active. It's trying to get the nose back up to level, and then that will help level out the elevator. One thing I want to point out is that when you have safe select activated, the elevators are actually somewhat up when you have the airplane sitting on, on the workbench. And the reason for that is because there's a little bit of up elevator built in with low throttle, uh, and there's some various mixing happening. This is why you cannot check the neutral position of your control surfaces, especially your elevator, with safe select activated. So in this case, with safe on, again, in the, in the Viper in particular, you will have some up elevator. Don't be alarmed by that. You'll want to have your elevator adjusted so it's probably um, pretty much neutral or flat uh, with the trailing edge of the stabilizer when you're in AS3X mode which I'm in now, and so you'll want that done um, so that way you can have the option to, uh, you know, again, make sure that you're um, deflecting the control surfaces 
uh, correctly in the neutral position when you're in AS3X mode because that's where your trimming is all done at. And so, again, we now have safe select activated with flaps down. And when the flaps are up, they're not activated. So uh, that's a way to set up a Viper in particular on a six channel transmitter, the DX6E, the DX6, uh, if you want to have safe select on the flap switch. Now, some guys would say, well, why don't you put it on the retractable landing gear? You know, I wish that was an option, but in this case, uh, when we tried to hook it up to the retractable landing gear, unfortunately, when the gear was up, safe was on, and when the gear was down, safe was off. And there's no way to reverse that. You know, in the future, we may have an option to do that um, because it would be, in some cases, desirable to tie safe to your landing gear. So when your gear is down, safe is on. When your gear is up, safe is off. So that way, every time you take off and land, safe is on. No problem. That's probably a little more ideal to the flap solution. But at least in this case, we've shown you the option that you can have safe select active on a six-channel transmitter with the fully deflected flaps, which is what most people are going to use for landing. Now, uh, again, with the lower flap settings that I've recommended, the negative 65% rather than the uh, negative 100% in the original version of the manual, that's a good enough setting for uh, relatively slow takeoffs. It will also help on uh, short field land takeoff, or sorry, it will help on short field landings and also short field takeoffs. If you're taking off a of grass, it doesn't hurt to have a little extra flap like that. It'll help get you off the grass a little faster too. Uh, and so again, that's kind of our official recommendation if you have a six channel transmitter. One thing I want to show you though before we exit the DX6E setup is I'm going to go back to the menus. I'm going to go back to the function list and I'm going to scroll back to the flap system. And I'm going to set a delay. Oh, missed the flap system there. Go back to flap system. And I'm going to go back to the speed adjustment. And I'm going to change that speed. I'm not going to go to the to the two that normally we recommend because we're using safe on the flaps. I'm going to just go to one. And the reason for that is because there's a slight delay then when I deploy the flaps, the, they come down a little bit slowly and then it kicks in safe. There's a little bit of delay in kicking safe in. So if you want to use safe select and, and, and the safe option as a bailout, so to speak, you don't want to set that delay too long. Otherwise, it'll take too long for safe to kick in. And so right now we got it at one, which is a good compromise. So now you'll see that the flaps have been slowed down in operation. They don't move up and down as quickly as they did and uh, we've also now got safe active so again this is a way that you can set up a six channel transmitter with safe tied to the flap channel so with full flap deflection you have safe select active uh, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this off and I'm going to show you guys how to set up a DX8E and then this is going to be my plug for the DX8E the reason that uh, we actually pushed the as the e-flight guys and, and the airplane guys we pushed the spectrum guys to do the DX8E in particular was for exactly this reason for planes just like this for many years six channels was the standard if you had a six channel transmitter you could fly almost every airplane that was out there including most park flyers including most park flyers like warbirds that had flaps and retracts or high performance EDFs but now as the world progresses we've added things like safe select which requires a seventh channel if you want to operate it independently and then down the road we may have other options like lights to turn on and off we may have bomb drops cargo doors there's all kinds of other options that we may add to airplanes down the road so now for me I strongly recommend an eight channel transmitter if you're moving up from a six channel let's say you bought a ready to fly with the DXE rather than buying a DX6E or DX6 which are both great transmitters don't get me wrong if you buy those they will suit most people for most uses but if you want Want to get the most out of a lot of especially the e-flight um, the higher end park flyers and and warbirds and edfs you're going to want to have at least seven and maybe preferably eight channels so again dx80 is a great value uh, it's got all the same functions as the dx6e plus a couple more uh, and so those extra channels really help because now you can separate all those functions so we're going to go into that now i'm going to swap out the transmitters here and i'm going to turn off the airplane and we're going to bind it to this dx8e instead of the DX6E. And so I'm going to go back through the bind process again. So I'm going to plug the bind plug into that extension. I'm going to get my transmitter ready. And again, I've got a brand new model selected here on the DX8E. And I'm going to bind it with Safe Select Active because I'm going to show you how to assign the switch for Safe Select on the 8-channel transmitter on a separate switch. So what I'm going to do is I've got my bind plug in now and I'm going to plug in my battery. And so what you guys can't see, and I'm actually not seeing it now, but uh, the, the light is flashing on the ESC, or sorry, on, on, sorry, on the, the receiver, and you'll, you'll hear the ESC beeping there. But again, the lights are flashing on the receiver because I'm in buy mode. I'm going to take the bind plug out before I actually turn the transmitter on. And now, again, I, the transmitter is off, so I'm going to hold down the momentary button, the I button, the bind button, and then I'm going to turn on the transmitter. And hopefully with this close proximity, it's still 
binds correctly. And you can see in this case the bind failed. And the reason for that is sometimes if you're too close, if your transmitter is too close to your airplane, uh, too close to the receiver, it kind of swamps it out and it doesn't bind correctly. So no problem. I'm going to plug the bind plug back in after I've unplugged the battery in the airplane. I'm going to bind, bind, pl plug the bind plug back in. I'm going to plug the battery in on the airplane. By the way, I'm also going to, uh, to turn my transmitter back off so I can restart the binding process of the transmitter as well. So I'm going to turn that off. And now I'm going to plug in the battery into the airplane. So now it should be ready to bind. I'm going to unplug my bind plug. And I'm going to take a few steps away from the airplane so my transmitter is a bit further away. And then I'm going to bind it that way. Okay, so I'm turning the DX8E on now, holding down the bind button. And I've now bound successfully. So again, sometimes you have to be a little bit further away, have your transmitter a little bit further away from the receiver to bind successfully. So the transmitter is now bound to the uh, receiver successfully. Now, I didn't do any of the pre-setup adjustments that we did in the DX6E before we bound it to the airplane. So the transmitter is now bound to the airplane, and you can see the flaps are deployed fully the wrong direction. They're operating the wrong direction. I'm going to go through all those settings that the, the manual and then the updated manual will uh, take you through. So first I'm going to uh, go to the system setup menu at the almost again the bottom of the function list. So I'm going to go there. I am going to turn off the RF no problem. I'm going to go to first and foremost we're going to go to the uh, we set model type as airplane but again that's pretty much by default always. So I'm going to go to aircraft type and I'm going to go to the wing and I'm going to select the one aileron one flap. There it is. And again, we talked about even those two flap servos, two aileron servos, they're all Y harness, so the system treats it as one aileron, one flap. So I'm going to select that, and now I'm going to go back to the function list, the main menu. So now we're back in the function list, and I'm going to go to the uh, servo setup first. And we're going to go to the reversing menu. And the original version of the menu did mention reversing the gear channel, which I'm going to do, and also we're going to reverse the flap channel which it did not mention, the later version should mention that. And now that we've done that, we're going to go back to the flap system. And so we're going to go to the flap system and get the flaps operating uh, with the correct values. And again, the original version of the manual mentions slightly different values than what we're going to mention here. And I'm going to set this to uh, switch D. This is the industry standard switch typically for flaps. And so I've chosen that. And now that I've chosen that, I can adjust the values. And so in the instruction manual, I'm going to follow the, the manual for the uh, position one. I'm going to go to, or position zero, I'm going to go all the way to 100% positive flap travel. And again, that's kind of setting our, our neutral or flaps up position. I'm going to set that to 100%. Uh, we're not putting any mixing in again for any of the other settings. That sometimes is personal preference. Uh, most of our guys haven't used any here, but uh, you could add some up elevator, down elevator as your preference, depending on what you want it to do with the flaps. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to go to position zero. In the manual, original version of the manual, it said 0%, but I'm going to change that to 45%. That's going to probably be our new standard recommendation. And then on position two, I'm going to change that to negative 65% rather than negative 100%. Uh, 100%, negative 100% is a lot more travel than you really need. You can use it if you'd like, but again, sometimes flap throw is a personal preference. Uh, but I've got that now set to 65. So my switch is functioning my flaps correctly now. But the last setting I need to change is the speed. I'm going to change the speed to the recommended two seconds. There it is. So now I've slowed my flaps down. So when I deploy them, it doesn't very abruptly change uh, in attitude or speed. It kind of slowly and smoothly does that. So there we go. Now we've basically changed all of the settings uh, to what we need for proper operation of the landing gear, the switch in the industry standard way, and the flaps in the industry standard way. So what we have to do now is we have to assign a switch for safe select, to turn safe select on and off. So right now we don't have a way to do that. Original version of the manual didn't talk about this. Again, we kind of showed you this in the DXE, DX6E setup part, but basically now we're going to set it to, and again, this is somewhat personal preference. I'm going to set it to the far back right switch here, which is the H position, the H switch. The reason for this is this is a two position switch. Some people use this for throttle cut. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use this for safe select to turn it on and off. And uh, the, the direction that it goes to turn safe on and off, that's also personal, personal preference, which you can set uh, with the channel reversing. 
Um, and so uh, first I'm going to assign it to that switch, but I want to tell, uh, make sure that switch H is active. So before I go too far, I'm going to go in back into the system setup. Turn off the RF, no problem. And I'm going to go to channel assign. Now, aux 2 is aux 2, aux 3 is aux 3, no problem. I'm going to go to the next menu, and I'm going to make sure that aux 2 is that switch back there, switch H, okay? So I'm assigning that to switch H. I'm going to go back to the function list and go, actually, I'm just going to go back to the main menu altogether. So it reconnects to the airplane. So now I've got all my controls again, and I'm going to go to the lowest throttle position, full right rudder, full up elevator, and full left aileron. So again, my sticks are basically on the inside there. You can see the inside corners. So while I hold those, I'm going to flip this switch back and forth five times to make sure that I tell it assign safe to that switch. I think I might have went one too many, but basically now I should have assigned safe to that switch. And I can see that when I pull the switch towards me, the elevators are going down and that's indicating AS3X mode. So now when the switch is pulled towards me, I am in AS3X mode. And you can see when I move the airplane, none of the control surfaces are working to counteract it. Again, they're digital servos. They, uh, they're making a little bit of chatter in the neutral position. That's normal. And then if AS3X is active, if I bump the throttle high enough, they may move a little bit. But they're not going to try and sit there and counteract it. But you can see if I hold the airplane like this and I then flip the switch to the other position, now the right aileron is deflecting to try and get the, uh, the wing back down to level. And the elevator is actually raising up to get the nose back up because it thinks it's going down and to the left right now. So uh, personally, I actually like to have that safe switch go the other direction. So you can reverse that channel. You just go to aux2 and reverse that function. No problem. It's, again, personal preference. I'm going to leave it the way it is now because that's the way it assigns it out of the box. And we now have uh, safe active on that switch. So again, when you're setting your neutral position or your surfaces, you want to do it without safe active. You do not want safe turned on because that's going to affect the neutral positions of the control surfaces. You want to make sure AS3X is on. Then you want to center your ailerons, your flaps, your adjust your elevators for level, adjust your rudder for neutral, your nose wheel for neutral. And again, out of the box, usually airplanes are very close from the factory, but there's very there's differences in things, variations in things, so you may have to do some fine mechanical adjustment. If this is your first jet, don't be alarmed. That's, uh, that's not a big deal to have to make some of those adjustments, especially, say, on the elevator or the flaps and ailerons. Those are very common things you have to adjust. Even in a trainer aircraft sometimes, an intermediate aircraft or a jet like this, it's not an uncommon thing to have to change. But we've now shown you guys how to uh, bind this airplane to a DX6E or a DX80, how to bind with safe select active, how to assign safe select on the DX6E to the flap channel, so with full flaps, it's active. On the DX80, we've assigned it to its own switch, so we've shown you kind of both ways. If you have a seven channel transmitter, you should be able to do it much like we did the DX80. If you have a higher channel transmitter, it should be, again, the very very similar uh, way to bind it and then assign the switches, uh, so on and so forth, uh, for the function of safe select. And uh, again, the manual will be updated to reflect this, so later versions of the manual will have these settings in there for the DX6 and DX6, as well as the DX80 and other transmitters. We'll also have an addendum that's out there. Uh, we've also gone over some of the different things that you can do on battery setups, uh, some of the adapters that you can buy if you have the wrong connector on your battery in EC3 versus an EC5, if you want to put a couple of batteries in series. Something else I want to point out is that the original version of the manual did have a couple of different CGs mentioned. On one page it mentioned 80 to 90 millimeter range. Another page it mentioned 75 to 85 millimeters. We're going to tweak the manual and add an addendum to uh, simplify that range, go to a single range. Basically that range is effectively 75 to 90 millimeters back from the leading edge of the wing. That is, again, somewhat personal preference, the CG. If you get a CG too far in one direction, it's going to affect things. If you get a plane too nose heavy, it's not going to flare very well. And in fact, that's one of the things some of the, the top pilots that we have have recommended. With the heavier batteries, like a 4000, uh, it does tend to be a little nose heavy, which makes it a little bit harder to flare, especially with the lower throw settings that are recommended for um, the out-of-the-box operation. Uh, so if you run the CG a little bit further back, yeah, then you might have a little bit more of a tail heavy-ish airplane, not too tail heavy to fly, but if you go within that range, you're going to be safe. Uh, but again, you can check our, our web page, you can look at the addendum, you can look at the later version of the instruction manual for the Viper for the final range that we recommend, and that's somewhat personal preference. We're going to never recommend a CG that is going to get you into a situation where it's way too tail heavy to fly. Uh, some people say, oh, your CG was too nose heavy, the recommended one, oh, your CG was recommended as too tail heavy. That's okay, that's personal preference. We have a, a, a wide variety of pilots here, and a lot of different guys fly these airplanes. We try to go and have a range that kind 
kind of fits most people's needs. We usually don't recommend too far on one side or the other, uh, but just watch out for that. Make sure you check your CG, especially if you're using a battery. It's different than what we recommend out of the box. And then one other thing I want to point out is that out of the box, uh, all of the uh, control throws will pretty much match the lower or first time EDF or intermediate pilot recommendations that are in our manual. But if you're an experienced pilot and you want more throw, if you watch our video on the Viper, you'll see some really cool snap maneuvers. Those maneuvers were done with a higher throw setting than what you can obtain uh, right out of the box, which you can get out of the box with uh, the standard setup. So what we do is in the manual, we show if you move the push rod out on the servo arm, all around on the ailerons, on the elevator rudder, you'll get more mechanical throw, and so then you can do more aggressive snaps and things. In order to do that, you do have to unscrew the ball ball link from the control horn. You have to use a small Phillips. You take that screw out. You then pull the entire push rod out of the servo arm. It's a Z-bend and you put it back into the outermost hole and then you connect everything back together and you'll have higher control throws. Again, we only recommend doing that if you're an experienced pilot looking for the most aggressive uh, aerobatic capability possible. Uh, and even with those settings, it's still very, very uh, manageable to fly. But again, for a first time EDF pilot, intermediate pilot, we recommend flying it out of the box the way it comes. So I think we've covered most of the things that we've seen come up in questions and, and some concerns that people have had about, again, the batteries you can use, transmitters you can use, control throw CG. Uh, but if you have any other questions, you can always check out our website, see if we've got the addendum up there. Uh, you can also check online, check our Facebook page. You can check uh, rcgroups.com. There's a lot of great information out there. Uh, and then always you can contact our product support staff if you have any other questions. But I'm looking forward to getting this one out and flying it. We'll hopefully do a follow-up video of this exact airplane. It's a brand new airplane. You guys saw me put this together in the live unboxing and assembly video. I've now uh, gone through adjusted the control surfaces. We've got it bound to a DX6, a DX8. I'll probably do the flying with the DX6E because that's more than enough transmitter for what I need to do. And then I'll have uh, safe select active with my flaps down. And so we'll do a follow-up video uh, flying it. So be sure to check that out. Thank you.